And what a booty! 2011 Mercedes-Benz C-Class on the OM651 2.1 diesel engine. Car come in for a service. And yeah, it looks like we've got a bit of an oil leak going on there. So we'll just let you have a wee look-see underneath. Now, I have cleaned this up a wee bit, you know, to try and uh, determine where it's coming from. So this was all, you see that clean there? I've cleaned that, but we can see, you know, there's oil residue there, and I've cleaned that on the roll bar a wee bit. And oil residue there. And up down here, So it's this sort of uh, front area here is where it's all coming from. And it's migrating, I think, a wee bit towards the back of the engine, you know? So whether well, you can see all that or not, let me see, is that gonna come up on camera? Not really, but anyway, We've got an oil leak from that front, front area here. So I did stick uh, an endoscope down in here to see if I could see anything. But uh, yeah, it is a bit of a, a known problem is this oil filter housing where it bolts on to the block. Uh, there's O-rings where it bolts on the block and it leaks. And the other thing beside it, and you, you're not going to see anything, is there's an oil cooler. Now the oil cooler can fail as well, but it leaks internally, and that manifests itself as engine oil in the coolant. Okay, so the coolant in this thing is a bit, well, it's sort of black on it, but I don't think the oil has mixed with the coolant in this case. It is sort of green looking. You can see it in the tube. But uh, the coolant doesn't look great. Uh, if the oil cooler was leaking internally, that allows the oil to get into the coolant. So oil pressure is higher than the coolant pressure. So the oil beats the coolant, if you want. So the oil gets into the coolant, not the coolant gets into the oil. If it's allowed to do so, and it's, the, the, it's a known failure in these cars. But uh, after speaking to the customer, I think the reason why this coolant is kind of brown looking is because, well, he's been mixing, he says it was originally red in color and uh, he's been putting blue stuff in it. So. It's not a consistent color and it doesn't look great. So I've recommended changing the oil filter housing and the oil cooler as all one unit. You can do the oil filter housing to address the oil leak separately, but I think that's a false economy. Because of the amount of work involved in this strip down, so because the coolers are known to be a failure item, this one doesn't look like it's failed. The internal leak, you know, the oil getting into the coolant, doesn't look like it at this point in time. But, you know, to strip all this down and uh, just change the one part, or even just change the, the O-rings, you know, there's, there's, there's a few failure points where these things can leak oil. So it's not just one position, so that's why I'm just changing the whole thing. Right, we just pulled that pipe off there and uh, let's have a look at this. So if there was oil contamination, so oil was getting in the coolant, you know, there'd be a tide mark here left on the, on the side of the, the container. But uh, 
the coolant actually looks a lot better condition here than it did from our sample. So the customer said to me that this, this coolant was red and he started putting green stuff into it or blue stuff or something. But this is definitely, it's definitely green um, as I expected it to be in this car. So there's a possibility he's getting that mixed up with his other car, which has red coolant on. But nevertheless, we're going to change this out anyway. We might clean that bottle out because uh, it was a bit stinking. So we're going to change the. We're still going to change the oil cooler assembly, oil cooler and oil filter housing as one. Um, the you know the, in the interest of future proofing this car. Right. So I've uh, removed the top coolant pipe there. Just uh, get it out of the way, you know. I like marking the direction of rotation of the serpentine belt if we're going to reuse it. If we're, you know, I'm going to put it back on again, and uh, that allows us to sort of see what we're up against here. So where's that? You know, the oil filter housing there uh, goes way down behind that that bracket in here, you know, and the oil cooler then will jut. It goes under the inlet manifold, the oil cooler, so this thing is like an L shape. So vacuum reservoir removed, get them pipes off. We'll mark everything up as we go along, you know what I mean? <laughs> you want to maybe even take a few photographs. And this EGR cooler, I don't think we're going to have to remove the whole EGR. The, the EGR sort of wraps around the back of this engine. So we'll just need to remove that EGR. That'll allow us access to the, the all that sort of carry on in there, down in there. So that'll all have to come off. Uh, the power steering, what my intention is with the power steering is to unbolt that and allow it to sit in this hole we have now. And uh, we might have to pull the aircon compressor off and move it to the side or let it drop down a bit or something. Don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, incidentally, just there's a there's a big black cover that goes on here that we've uh, popped. Just it just holds in with poppers and uh, goes in down here to these grommets. So you pull it forward and then pull it up. You know. But uh, we'll get this belt off. And what I like to do, if it's uh, one of these belts that goes around the world for a shortcut, you know, just you can do a wee quick sketch. You know, see if you're looking up the service data, but uh, you know, less than a minute done that wee sketch there. Just put that to the side. Right, so we'll have the, the vacuum box released there of the pipes and the bolts. And uh, we'll have this EGR cooler. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this EGR cooler from the actual EGR which is beyond us here. So we'll have three torques at the top, but we also have three torques just like that at the bottom, and they're the tricky ones. Alrighty, wasn't too bad to remove that actually, that EGR cooler. So the tricky ones are that bolt and that bolt, because you can't see them. You can get your hand underneath to catch that bolt. I lifted that out with a magnet. However, and these bolts are gonna be hard. <laughs> easy enough to take it out, putting, that, putting those back in again. Maybe a different fun and games, top three are gift obviously. Right, so what we'll have, the new, is this part of the inlet manifold. This EGR pipe then will have to be removed. It goes on the side. I'm gonna leave that where it is, hopefully. And we'll take that away and uh, get that valve away and then sort of work, work to the front, I think. Okay, so I've taken another couple of pieces off on the battery out, as you can see, and that's to, assist with reassembly more than anything else. So 
you don't sort of have to take that out, but that's that, uh, it's the bit that goes around the back here. And that cable's plugged into or clipped into. And the battery in this car resides in there. But, uh, so that's just to help with uh, reassembly more than anything. I don't know where I can get you in here. But, and you're not going to see it. Let me see where my finger is. Over here, if we can get that pipe out of the way. So the EGR pipe here, you know, you're able to get that EGR pipe removed, but for me, I'm thinking that is gonna be hateful to put back in again, you know, with it being at the side here. You know, you can't, you can't even see the, the bolt. So, uh, that's the reason why that's removed. So it goes it goes all the way around the back. So, you know, extra half an hour maybe to do that, but uh, it doesn't half open it up. So what I might do now is those vacuum pipes down there. Let's see. So those vacuum pipes seal them the red stripe on. So that's on a wee solenoid valve, and now that I can get in from the side you know, in this way. Let me see, now that I can add in this side, I'll maybe remove that, because, you know, we're trying to get at a ring down there. To get that, those, all those bits of wire and pipes never hang out of the way, you know, to clear that area down there. So, yeah. I think I'll do that. Right, so, now I have that uh, solenoid valve, and that means I can get rid of all the vacuum pipes that were all in this area here. So bottom right of your screen, and I can get my hand in here with that uh, firewall thing removed. So that allows these wires here, all these electrical plugs, and there's a whole heap of them. You know, give, it, it gives them somewhere to go to then, you know? So it'll, it, it makes this a uh, hell of a lot easier. So that exposes this bolt here. You can see it there. So this one here, at my finger jump. So this is the fourth fourth bolt that holds the uh, throttle body or anti-shutter valve, which is basically hidden by its own electrical connector, which is there. You know, and we get that out of the road, and that exposes it. So, to be honest with you, in this particular model, it's nearly a necessity, I think, to remove that side bit to get access. Right, okay, a wee bit further on. So, there's our intake pipe work is into the manifold and uh, I'll just show you so this wee valve here this wee by here there's a wee bracket on there you see that that wee bracket and if we release the pipe up there and it goes on to here and release it from this bracket you know you can just get that out of the way enough to uh, I'll put that up the way to get this off. So lift it off and then lift the throttle body off or anti shutter valve, whatever you want to call it. So that just about moves out of the way. So what that does for us is, I can just about see it below there. Yeah, so you see that clip? That clip goes on to the oil cooler. And uh, we can now take that clip off, and that'll allow us to take this valve, lift this valve out completely. A wee bit further on, and we've released the power steering pump uh, from that bracket there, and that has, uh, well, we can now see in here. Right, let's see if we can show you this. So, that's the bottom of our oil cooler or oil filter housing, I mean. 
and we can see the block there is just soaking away oil. Yeah, that's the source, all right. Right, so what we'll need to do now, this is the bracket for the power steering. We'll remove it. And there's a torx head at bolt one, just holding that on. That there will have to come away, uh, get the wiring released in there, and there's a bracket, not aluminium bracket there. We need to get rid of that. So three brackets, and then just looking at the aircon compressor here. I think we might get away with just demounting that and letting it fall down a bit. And that's just so we can get out the bottom bolts down in there, you know. So just let, let that go down, I think. So we're underneath the car again here for this, for this aircon compressor. So there is a fixing bolt there. We'll just zoom you in that wee bit. There she is, and there's a bracket to the left of it, which I have removed. And uh, to create this sort of space, you know, we've had to uh, just remove our pipes, you know. So that's that bracket. Uh, it's fixed there. That's what holds that thing. And, you know, once you get that front one out, the flexible, uh, in that pipe, then may as well just pull the rest of it out, you know, so it, it just comes out the back. It just comes out from in here, you know. So it leaves that space for this uh, compressor, hopefully, to drop down for us. Right, back up on top then, and uh, we'll have the last bolt of that aircon compressor <laughs> removed. And we've it sitting down on a few rags there. But uh, the pipes are still attached. So it's pulled on this pipe here a wee bit. But uh, it's fine. It's just sitting on there. There's a brave weight in that thing. So you don't want it, you know, you don't want it to sort of dangle, if you know what I mean. But uh, that has moved down from this bracket. So that used to go into there. Oh, I, and towards the rear of the aircon compressor, if I can move out of the way for you, towards the rear, down in there, there's a, one of those bolts in at the back, and it's sort of blind, it's underneath all that, you know, so you're doing the old uh, reach around. So that is enough, oh, I can't really get you in with this camera, that is enough anyway, there's a couple of wires to release just and our lower mounting bolts, just to the left of the screen there, here. Let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. So those two Torx headed things there are uh, our lower mounting bolts that we need to uh, remove. And then whatever bolts is holding the oil cooler itself on. And that should allow us to release that whole assembly as one. And oh yes, we will loosen that oil filler. Uh, not oil. Shut up. Oh yes, and before we go to take that assembly off, we'll uh, loosen this oil filter cap up off, you know, and let as much oil as we can, that'll be fully oil there, engine oil. So we'll let uh, all the oil drain into the sump and then we'll take that out, scrape back in, maybe temporarily, but yeah. There's a big hole in there now. And here it is. So this is our old unit. Uh, just to point a note, so we'll have ordinary Torx type screws here. Uh, and uh, there, you know. But what fixes this to the engine are the inverted torques. So they're E12, you know. So you don't take any of these out, you know. 
it's just the inverted torques you take out. And then there's two at the top. And this oil cooler is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but these are prone to, you know, creating a hairline crack inside them and mixing the coolant with the oil, you know. So they've been superseded to this one. Still by the same manufacturer, Mal, and uh, slight difference. You can see these wee cutouts here. So slight difference in appearance, but this is a, a superseded part number. So there's our fixing holes there. Those holes, I don't think that hole is used. And that one, one of the brackets screws into that hole, you know. So, and as far as I know, we get a new filter out and everything. And the part number for that superseded part number is that 1310. So the original unit on this car, you know, that has a different part number. Uh, you know, so it's been superseded to that. Later on in the video, I'll uh, I'll discuss whenever I get this unit in. I'll discuss the failure points. You know where where the problems lie with this, as well as the oil cooler. Hey, that's us all cleaned up in there, and uh, we're doing a lot better now. And we're ready for reinstallation. Right, so that's the new unit fitted, and uh, we'll have the six uh, external torx bolts there. So they were, uh, let me see, turn that light off. They were an E12. Is that style? External Torx type thing. So the crank is here that Torx specs, I think it's M6, 10 Newton meters. I think it's M8, is 20 Newton meters. But the actual, those six bolts for the housing itself. I think they're probably the only M8 bolts there are, so they were 20. Okay, set wrap. Aircon compressor back up into position. Power steering pump back on again. So we're starting to build it up, you know, in reverse order. So from the front now, to the back type of thing, you know. And uh, we're closing up our good work in there. You can just about see the oil cooler poking its head out there with that pipe there. So uh, a few brackets on and all that. And again, as I say, I think just build it just it's best just to build it back up again just uh, from front to back in the reverse order we took everything off. We'll have our intake pipe reinstalled again, give everything a good clean up and uh, with all that oil and the mess that it made. So that slows down the process. So this type of job here you know, you need, you need to have a bit of patience, you know, and take it step by step and, you know, don't rush it and that there. It's quite intricate and uh, all that wiring clipped in the correct position. A plethora of multi-plugs all over the show. And uh, if you root the wiring in the correct place, you know, the plugs fall into place. So I have noticed that, you know, there are a couple of plugs that are actually the same and you could theoretically swap them over. But, you know, they're in the wrong position. But, uh, you know, that's why your loom has to be clipped back in. And, uh, you know what I mean? So there's a clip there. We'll have to go on that bracket. And uh, so, so nothing rubs, you know. And now's the time to say to yourself, did I tighten all those bolts in there? Because it's now completely buried. So every mechanic will know that feeling. Did I put that hose clip on? So, you know, you have to sort of double check yourself because there's that much stuff here that, you know, it just closes all that work in. The only thing we can see now is that. So there's a dreaded bolt at the bottom of this AGR cooler. So it's opposite to that one, only underneath it, you know. Clearly the top three are handy enough. You can get out the side and you can see the, the other one, the side one down there. But there's one in the middle, which proves a wee bit difficult. And 
well, not that easy. But if you have an endoscope with a side camera, well, you can see what you're doing. So I'm using quarter drives there with a wobbler on it. That gives me a wee bit of movement. And I use blue tack to hold it in. That's what I tend to use. You know, a lot of people use tissue paper or whatever it is, but the blue tack, you know, sticks to it. They end up sort of filling the, the socket, ends up getting filled up with blue tack and then because those bolts have a wee, uh, a wee shoulder on them, you know, it's, it can stick to the edges, you know. So the socket that I'm using for that is one of these style sockets, you know, as well. It grips it in multiple places. The E-type uh, sockets, which we're supposed to use for these here, um, I don't have any that size. That size there it's a D10, it goes up to 3 8 drive. So I need to use quarter for most of this sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's what I've used there. A type gear lock, I think they call it. Yeah, I did use that belt back on again. I did refer to that drawing there. So just checking. Yes, there is indeed a brand new filter on it. So that's fine. Vacuum reservoir on, we've got that rear heat shield or bulkhead, whatever you want to call it, back in again. That, now removing that really does help with access down this corner. And when you remove the battery, it means you have somewhere to put your elbow down in that hole then. You know, somewhere to put your arms in here, you know, and you get everything, you get access through those bolts through here. Now, to take this off and put it back on again, it is a bit of a flaff. It's a bit of a cord, like, I'll not lie, you know. And uh, there's a heater pipe. Where is it? That heater pipe there goes through it, you know, this one. So disconnecting that and then getting it back on again with the coupling at the back, it's a bit of a flaff, you know. You may be able to get at those bolts that are down in here from below, which largely are associated with that, that steel pipe there, that EGR pipe. But yeah, if you're removing the whole EGR, like, you know, it's nearly a necessity for that. But this job here, you could maybe get away without it. But I took it off just so I knew that I could reassemble stuff uh, a lot easier and better, but taking that off and putting it on again, it's, neat. it's a job in itself. And that is us, up and running. Yeah, bit of a job that, like, you know. So this car is a 2011 model year, and there's 136,600 uh, miles on the clock there. So what I'll do now is I'll just show you, just to finish off, I'll just show you the old oil cooler, and I'll uh, show you those points of failure that I talked about. Right, so we finish off. This is our old unit, as we saw earlier in the video. Um, there, there's a reason why I changed the whole thing, and not just this part, which is the part that was giving us, you know, the trouble of the oil leak. Now, people do, and you can't buy from Mercedes Benz actually these two seals. Um, there's another seal, I think. I imagine in here, but 
these two seals here are listed separately and yes indeed you can buy them and you know the hard and they're in the they're in the block so the hard and up now where was this leaking from i'm not 100 percent sure it could have been you know this sometimes you look at these and they're flattened you know and you can see that they're on their brittle and all that there these ones they're not flat really and they're not really that brittle either so you might say mm, maybe that's not the where it's been leaking from so they actually don't look too bad to be honest with you but they are they are a bit stiff they're not as pliable as they used to be clearly you know but the reason why i changed the whole thing is because the other place it leaks from is actually here so it's that interface so you know to, to repair that part if you change these two seals there's a good chance you won't fix your lower look because it's actually leaking from here and it runs down and it looks as if it's if it's one of those two you know so it's this is the is really the the common cause so what this is it's some sort of relief valve or something i'll just wang it off here have a look get off so there's a spring of thing and uh yeah it's some sort of pressure pressure valve thing you know and it leaks here so is this coming up on camera or am I getting dripped on my oil? You know. Anyway, that has gone flat. So, and that's the first time I've had this out. This isn't a setup. That is stiff. And it's gone flat. You know, it's flattened off. That's our oil leak there. It's not, actually not these two, I don't think. Might, leak, might be leaking a wee bit, but it's this boy here is the, cult, is the real culprit. You know? So anywho, that's why you change the whole lot. The other reason is that this particular, this is the older part number cooler, and these are known to crack internally. So you have, you know, your potential external failure of these seals, and uh you know it cracks internally and then mixes oil with coolant we, we i've changed the coolant i've just dumped the, the coolant in this car uh just purely because it's it was a 13 year old and uh i don't think the coolant's ever been changed so we've done that as part of sort of maintenance so the old coolant's being dumped even well even though it's not contaminated but as you saw earlier in the video at the start we took it out and we checked it so you know made sure that this wasn't causing problems because that would have meant it would have meant that we had to flush to put the the, the system out and i would have had to do another uh procedure you know but this is our oil leak not those two so oh i finish off that's it wrap it up the only reason why you change this whole unit is that out of mercedes benz is 117 pound plus fat it's actually not that expensive, you know, for the, the whole thing and including the oil filter and all, this, all the seals are there and all that and you just bolt it on the way it is. You do not need to touch these here. The other thing as well is people uh, I've heard try to take this off, you know, on its own. To change these two, they can't get at that. You can't get at that if you just take that off. And the this struggle putting it back on again and they tend to nip this bottom seal this bottom seal gets nipped and then it starts leaking from there but that wasn't there that wasn't their oil leak in the first place they've, they've just created another oil leak you know what i mean anywho maybe you got something out of that uh many thanks for watching as ever and all the best and